Let's look at this FET simulation that illustrates a battery attached to a parallel plate capacitor. There's a couple of things that you want to notice about this. The simulation allows us to vary the distance between the capacitor plates. Notice the capacitance of this capacitor changes as we vary the separation distance of the plates. The capacitance is lower when the separation distance is higher, and the capacitance is higher when the separation distance is lower. If we took some careful calculations, we would see that the capacitance is inversely proportional to the separation distance, which I'll represent the separation distance using the variable d. For a given separation distance, if we change the area of the capacitor plates, we will also change the capacitance. If we increase the area of the plates, the capacitance goes up. If we decrease the area of the plates, the capacitance goes down. If we took careful measurements, based off of our measurements, we would see the capacitance is directly proportional to the area of the plates. If we look at the two together, we would see that the capacitance is jointly proportional to the area of the plate and the reciprocal of the separation distance between the plates. The constant of proportionality is just the permittivity of free space. This is a result that we could derive for a parallel plate capacitor. Different types of capacitors will have different, a different expression for capacitance based off of the geometry of the capacitor. But one thing to note, the ability of this capacitor to store charge, which is what we call capacitance, depends only on the geometry of the capacitor itself. In this case, only on the area of the capacitor and the separation distance of the capacitor plates. Let's now detach the capacitor from the circuit. And let's increase the voltage on the battery. So we will use a voltage. I'll just set the voltage right here. Let's pull out our voltmeter to measure what the voltage currently is for our battery. So I'll place the red lead on the positive terminal. I'll place the black lead on the negative terminal. And now I have a voltage uh, measured across the battery of being 0 0.600 volts. Now if we do the same measurement across the capacitor, notice the measurement across the capacitor is 0 volts. So right now, the capacitor has zero potential difference between the plates. And that makes sense because there is not a separation of charge between the plates. The plates are neutrally charged as of this moment. But watch what happens when we attach the capacitor to the battery. Now, the simulation makes it seem that the voltage on the capacitor went to 0 0.600 volts instantly as soon as three as soon as we established the circuit now that's not true it actually takes some amount of time and that amount of time is measurable in a real circuit so it took time for the capacitor to acquire a potential difference of 0.6 volts so the simulation is showing the capacitor after it has been fully charged by the battery. So if a capacitor is attached to a battery as it is right now, it'll become fully charged. And what that means is it reaches the maximum amount of charge that it could store based off of the potential difference established by the battery. 
Notice something else about this setup. We have a certain amount of charge on the plates. If we increase the potential difference of the battery, notice we are able to increase the amount of charge on the plates. Well, that makes sense because if we have more potential difference given to us by the battery between the plates of the capacitor, that means that the electric field can push more like charges on each plate. It can push more positive charge to the positive plate, and it can push more negative charge to the negative plate. If we decrease the potential difference of the battery, notice how we're able to store less charge on the capacitor plates. Now, why do you think that is? Why do you think we need a higher voltage to add more charge? And if we don't have as much voltage, we are only able to store less charge. Well, think about it like this. It takes energy to move charge from one place to another based off of the charge configuration. For example, let's look at just one plate of the capacitor, the positive plate. Let's say the battery, let's say the first positive charge appears on the positive plate. That first positive charge doesn't have any other positive charge on the plate to repel it. So it's actually very easy to move that first positive charge. But now let's move a second positive charge. Okay, so once we move that second positive charge to the plate, it took a little bit of effort to move it. So imagine, if you will, we're pushing this third charge to the plate, and that third charge is being repelled by the first charge and it's being repelled by the second charge. And we can get it on the third plate, or on the plate, if we apply a strong enough electric field, but that electric field has to be strong enough in order to overcome the electric forces of repulsion of the charges that are already there. Now let's say we're trying to push a fourth charge. So this fourth charge is repelled by the first one, it's repelled by the second one, it's repelled by the third one. It There is more repulsion for it to overcome, so it's going to take us more effort to put that fourth charge on the plate, and we'll eventually be able to do it, but it's going to require a stronger electric field for there to be a stronger electric force for us to push that fourth charge onto the plate. And it goes on. If we now have a fifth charge, it's repelled very strongly by the first three and by the fourth one. And with enough effort, we could fit it on. But as time goes on, it gets more and more difficult to store additional charge to the plate. And in fact, if we were to do a graph of charge on that positive plate versus time, it would reach a horizontal asymptote where that would be the maximum amount of charge that we're able to store for the configuration that we have. So what the FET simulation is showing, it's showing that case in which we just can't put any more charge on the plate. But we do know one thing. We said that we needed more of an electric field to push more charge to the plate. And remember, there's a relationship between potential difference and electric field. In essence, the greater the electric field, the greater the potential difference. So if we look at this then, the greater the voltage across the terminals of the battery 
due to the greater electric field and vice versa. They're two sides of the same phenomena. So the greater the voltage we have, the greater the charge we're able to accumulate. So in other words, to accumulate more charge, we have to have a stronger potential difference between the plates of the capacitor. Now, let's look at if we increase the voltage again. Notice how we're able to in increase the amount of charge we have. So that makes sense. Charge, maximum charge that we could store is directly proportional to the potential difference. If we have zero electric potential, we'll have zero net charge on our plate. Well, let's go back to, let's pick a value of 0.5 volts. That's a nice, easy value. And let's look at the electric field at that value. So there's our electric field lines. And once again, notice how if we increase the electric potential or the potential difference of our battery, we get more electric field lines, a stronger electric field. And if we decrease the voltage, we get a weaker electric field, allowing us to store less charge. So let's go back to 0 0.500 volts. Now notice the amount of charge we have on our plates right now. If we increase the area, we increase the capacitance. And notice the amount of charge we're able to store increases. Now, what does that mean? Well, and why is that? It's because the charges have more space to spread out. Since every new charge we add to the plate repels every other positive charge on that plate, if you give them more area to spread out, we'll be able to put more charges on them. If you give them less area to spread out, the force of repulsion is too great. We're not going to be able to store as much charge. And remember, since capacitance is directly proportional to area, we could see that as we increase the capacitance, we're increasing the amount of charge we store. And as we decrease the capacitance, we decrease the amount of charge we store. And also separation distance, remember, is inversely proportional to capacitance. So as we increase our separation distance, we're able to store less charge. And if we decrease our separation distance, we're able to store more charge. Now, the reason why that is, is the closer you are to the opposite plate, and remember that opposite plate has an opposite sign, the closer we are to that opposite plate, the more those positive charges will be attracted to the negative charges, which means we'll be able to fit even more on each plate. So what we see here is as separation distance increases, we know capacitance decreases, and notice the amount of charge we're able to store decreases. And as separation distance increases, or decreases, the capacitance increases, and we're able to store more charge. If we took careful calculations, we would see this, that charge is directly proportional to the capacitance. And in fact, this is summarized by this simple statement. The charge stored on the plate of a capacitor is equal to the potential difference across the plates of the capacitor. The greater the potential difference, the more charge you can have, times the capacitance. So in other words, the maximum charge that you're able to store on the plates of a capacitor is equal to the product of the potential difference across the capacitor plates and the capacitance.